This week, we go trick-or-treating for Tales of the Jedi poster art. Genevieve O'Reilly enters the Mon Mothma chat and more. Ooh, let's see what I got. Five pieces of candy, a chocolate bar, I got a rock, oh, and I got some Star Wars news, my favorite. Almost time for Tales of the Jedi. Yesterday, we got our first look at the key art for the series of animated stories featuring the divergent paths of Ahsoka Tano and Count Dooku. But they're not alone. Gathered around the Jedi emblem, there's Ahsoka's mother, Bail Organa, a creepy inquisitor, young Qui-Gon Jinn, the green queen Jedi Master Yaddle, and Tara Sanube. Hey, last time we saw Master Sanube, he was... Oh, no, never mind. Too scary. Moving on. Take a closer look at the Tales of the Jedi key art on the Star Wars social channels now and watch all six shorts for yourself when they arrive on Disney Plus later this month. New York Comic Con begins today and we're thrilled to return to the Big Apple to kick off phase two of Star Wars The High Republic with the five architects of the initiative and other special guests. Keep your bookmark on StarWars.com throughout the weekend as we report in from the convention with the latest reveals from both Star Wars publishing panels. Or I'll be there, and you can bet your last vial of coaxium that I'll be bringing some of that sweet, sweet Star Wars news back just for you. Last week, the moth madness firmly took hold with the fourth episode of Andor, Aldani, now streaming on Disney+. As usual, if you're not caught up, find a quiet corner of this dinner party, get a snack, come on back at the timestamp below. Number one, Perrin Firtha, how dare? And I thought Tim was bad, but you know what, we'll get to that. Turns out Luthen has a job and a very pretty necklace for Cassian Andor, and at this point, credits are almost all that he cares about, so great timing. During a quick trip to Aldani, Andor shaved his face and changed his name to Clem, signaling an interesting undercurrent of duality in the episode. Then Clem was introduced to the Ocean's Eleven-style crew that Luthen's put together for a heist at the Imperial Garrison. There's no nonsense Vel, who is just not in the mood for trouble, Skeen, Terramin, Laser Focus Sinta, and my sweet idealistic Nemec who spends all his spare time making very cool models to help them steal from the Empire. And back on Coruscant, ISB supervisor Dedra Miro did her most determined march into work while Mon Mothma appeared like the beacon of light that she is to meet up with Luthen, who has the fastest wig application skills we've ever seen. While we had a great time pausing every few moments to look through the treasure trove of background props, nodding to all kinds of Star Wars connections, Calicori, Wookie Helmet. Just to name a few, the tension was palpable as Mom navigated Luthen's alter ego, then retired her stoic public face to the safety of her private residence, only to find Slymore was coming to dinner. Again, we ask Perrin, how dare? Watch or rewatch the episode for yourself over on Disney Plus Now, as well as yesterday's brand new episode, The Axe Forgets. Now we're thrilled to have Mon Mothma herself, Genevieve O'Reilly, joining us. Genevieve, you've played the senator off and on for almost two decades between Star Wars Revenge of the Sith Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and Star Wars Rebels. What's been different about your approach to the character each of those times in every incarnation? The iterations that we found her in, both in Rebels and in Rogue One, were similar. They are of a leader of a rebellion with a tough decision having to often send people on a mission where there is sacrifice required. So it requires a dignity and a strength, which is at the heart, I think, of Mon Mothma. What is different this time is that we meet Mon Mothma in a very different stage of her life. It's quite lonely. There is a cost to her voice. And I think it's interesting to see her having to make choices to step outside of that loneliness and get to Yavin. I remember studying Caroline Blackston's scene in Return of the Jedi, really trying to work on capturing her voice, her syntax, so that fans could see a connectedness between me playing her and Caroline playing her. I always go back to that scene that Caroline did originally because she originated her with George Lucas. It was the early 1980s, I think, that they made that film. And I think it's to be paid attention to that at that time, George Lucas wrote the leader of the Rebel Alliance as a woman. And I think that was as ambitious then than it is now. And so she is a character that I love, and she is a character that I wanted to do well all the way back in 2005 as much as I do now. Well said. Thank you, Genevieve. That's it for this week, but for more on these stories and other news from around the galaxy, check out StarWars.com. And be sure to join us right here for This Week in Star Wars every Thursday. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.